in the 1970s, the U.S. dumped millions of car tires into the ocean with the dual goal of creating artificial coral reefs and simultaneously disposing of massive quantities of accumulated tires in landfills. However, the disaster began years later. Instead of becoming a resource for fish, these tires turned into a threat to marine life. Ocean currents did not leave the tires in place, but carried them, causing them to collide with and systematically destroy natural coral reefs, piece by piece. Over time, chemicals within the tires began to leach into the water, polluting the entire ecosystem. A project that was supposed to be a pioneering environmental solution has today become an example of how a flawed resolution can turn into a silent environmental catastrophe. Were good intentions enough? Are they repeating the same mistakes today? with solutions that appear beautiful on the surface, but are dangerous underneath. And can tires truly serve the environment? Or are they a ticking time bomb at the bottom of the sea? We will find out in this video. But before we begin, support me with a like and subscribe to the channel, as this encourages me to continue. This is what we'll explore in today's video. All right, before we dive into the rest of this, if you're new here, consider subscribing. And if you like what you're seeing, hit that like button. It seriously helps the channel a ton. The idea of creating artificial coral reefs is not new, and it is often considered a useful way to support marine life and attract fish and fishermen to more active areas. Among the ideas proposed in the past was the use of old car tires to achieve two goals, simultaneously helping marine creatures and disposing of damaged tires. In the 1970s, people thought that dumping tires into the ocean would be an excellent idea. Instead of piling them up on land, and polluting the landscapes. But what began as a clever solution is today viewed as a major environmental blunder. The public's view of the environment has changed, and with it, their understanding of the consequences of those decisions has also shifted. At the time, authorities in Broward County, Florida were impressed with the idea and officially participated in it, and the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers even joined the project. In 1974, over 100 private boats contributed to the plan's execution led by the U.S. Navy ship USS Thrash, commencing the process of sinking thousands of tires into the sea. The project's biggest moment came when approximately 2 million tires, bound together with metal clips, were dropped to cover a vast area of 37 acres of the seabed, over a mile offshore and at a depth of up to 65 feet. But how did they amass this enormous quantity of discarded tires? The story goes back to the 1960s, when old tires began accumulating in landfills across the United States, some in unlicensed sites. Over time, these dumps caused environmental disasters, including massive fires that led to air and water pollution, and attracted insects and mosquitoes, increasing the risk of disease outbreaks in nearby cities. Back then, no one knew what to do with these vast quantities of tires. Merely keeping them was not a solution, as their decomposition takes between 50 to 80 years and their numbers never stopped growing. What's worse is that about 75% of a tire's volume is considered wasted space, meaning it occupies a large amount of room without real benefit, as if it is awaiting a better use. Today, humanity generates about a billion discarded tires annually, while estimates suggest there are more than 4 billion damaged tires stored in landfills and warehouses around the world. Although the number of cars in the past was smaller, Making the collection of tires at the time easier, the idea seemed promising and ambitious. The project's goal was grand, to make these artificial reefs the largest in the world. For this reason, the project garnered widespread support from several entities, and people were enthusiastic to participate in such a massive environmental undertaking. Even the famous tire manufacturer, Goodyear, participated, donating tires and the specialized equipment for binding them together. Other tires came from waste dumps, as a symbolic gesture, the company launched its famous blimp over the area and dropped a gold-painted tire into the ocean as the official inauguration of the project. In a press release, the company stated that the tires would provide shelter for fish and marine creatures and praised the characteristics of old tires as suitable materials for reef construction. The idea was simple, build a comfortable underwater home that would double or triple the marine life in the area. Imagine it was like building a new residential neighborhood. Over time, with the arrival of marine creatures, life would begin to flourish, and small, then large organisms would appear. The coral reefs would attract fish, which would support biodiversity, improve the situation for fishermen, 
and draw tourists to discover this unique marine world. The project seemed poised to benefit everyone without any losses, but it turned out that tires were not suitable for this role. They were too light and did not stay in place, and the nylon or steel ties that held them together could not withstand storms and strong currents. The result? The tires scattered in every direction, some even reaching the shores, and they failed to contribute to building a complete ecosystem as hoped. Out of the over a million tires, only 10% were utilized by certain types of marine organisms. The remaining marine creatures did not find anything suitable for their needs, as it did not provide a comfortable or safe environment. In contrast, reefs made of concrete proved effective, although they were initially considered more expensive. But the true cost emerged later when it became clear that the use of tires had caused a major environmental disaster. The tires, moving with waves and storms, began to collide with natural coral reefs, shattering them and preventing them from recovering. The rubber used in them became like mobile marine bombs, destroying marine habitats. At a time when reefs were already suffering from pollution, overfishing, and climate change, the issue does not stop there. As old tires contain heavy metals and dangerous chemicals that start leaching into the water over time, these substances transfer to the bodies of fish and other marine life, threatening their lives and potentially causing mass deaths. When the tires break down into small fragments, they become deadly traps that suffocate living organisms. On the other hand, when artificial reefs succeed in attracting large numbers of fish, it draws the attention of predators. These predators migrate from their original environments towards the new reef sites, disrupting the natural balance and leading to disturbances in other ecosystems. What began as an ambitious environmental project turned into a great danger threatening all marine life. After the disaster became evident, some attempted to intervene. In 2001, Dr. Robin Sherman received a $3,000 grant to begin removing tires from the sea. But she could only pull out 1,600 tires at a staggering cost per tire. It was clear that the magnitude of the problem was too great to be solved by the efforts of individuals or simple volunteer campaigns, good intentions backed by ill-considered decisions resulted in an environmental catastrophe that would require years of work and immense costs to fix. In 2002, environmental authorities in the state of Florida and Broward County decided to join the efforts to clean up the sea after realizing the extent of the disaster resulting from the artificial reef project, in which over 2 million rubber tires had been dumped into the sea. After studying the situation, it became clear that the rescue operation would be exorbitantly expensive. By 2007, Broward County requested assistance from the U.S. Department of Defense, and the military agreed to participate in the operation, viewing it as a good opportunity to train divers on salvage missions. Thus, dozens of divers began working on a mission resembling a military operation. At a depth of only 6 meters, the tires were spread densely, as if the sea had turned into a massive landfill. Using ropes and buoyant equipment, divers managed to haul up about 1,000 tires daily. The removal of the tires is done in two stages. First, divers collect and secure the tires underwater, and then they are gradually lifted to the surface of a barge. However, the work is not easy at all, as it depends on sea conditions, which can change suddenly due to currents and storms. Initially, the tires were relatively clustered, which made handling them easier. But over time, they scattered in the sea, with some reaching distant states, like North Carolina. This is only what could be tracked meaning huge quantities are still missing in the ocean depths. Due to this chaos, the tire removal process became long, exhausting, and costly. Even worse, the tires could not simply be pulled onto the shore and left there. In 2007, a plan was devised to reuse the tires by shredding them and using them in road paving projects, or as an alternative fuel. Tires that were in poor condition and unsuitable for recycling were sent to waste-to-energy facilities in West Palm, Florida. As the years passed, the cost of removing a single tire increased significantly. Initially, the cost was about $17, but it reached approximately $29.50 per tire by February 2024. Due to the dispersion of the tires and the difficulty of accessing and collecting them, with nearly 2 million tires in the sea, the total cost became a huge financial burden. Some might suggest, why didn't they hire a private company to solve the problem? This did happen previously but the experience was exorbitantly expensive, costing about $30 million, which was supposed to be funded through taxes. However, 
The idea was met with widespread public rejection, as no one wanted to pay taxes for old tires in the sea. The damage has been done, and some ecosystems simply cannot be restored to what they once were. Furthermore, no authority or individual can suddenly decide to start removing tires from the sea. As the matter requires numerous approvals and permits from official bodies, and these procedures can take months. Some sources say the military has removed over 677,000 tires, and despite this effort, it is believed that 500,000 tires still lie on the seabed. However, the truth is that no one knows the exact number or even where to start counting. It was expected that all the tires would be removed by 2024 but many doubt this deadline. What is certain is that the current tire removal contract will end in 2028, but as time passes, the mission has become more difficult and complicated, as most tires have detached from the original bundles and scattered, making them more costly and laborious to find and collect. Scientists have noted that damaged coral reefs, such as those harmed by the tires, require a long period to recover, and even under the best conditions, it may take decades, perhaps 20 or more years, to regain some of their health. Furthermore, the formation of new coral reefs from scratch can take up to 10,000 years. Many countries have used tires to create artificial coral reefs with the goal of supporting marine life. France, for example, has about 3.2 million cubic feet of these reefs, while Japan leads globally with over 76 million cubic feet. Although some countries view these projects as a practical environmental solution, others warn of their potential environmental risks. The idea of artificial reefs is not new, as sunken ships and marine structures, such as bridges, houses, and natural materials like rocks, concrete, and wood have been used in their construction. In the modern era, companies prefer more durable materials such as limestone and steel. One of the most successful experiments is Gibraltar. In 1973, reefs were established using cars, boats, cargo ships, and concrete blocks after abandoning the idea of tires due to their movement by waves. India, in 2013, built the Temple Reef from diverse materials like stones and palm trees, and it has become home to over 75 marine species. The United States used 714 subway cars, armored vehicles, boats, and over 3,000 tons of weighted tires. The result? The number of marine organisms increased by 400 times between 2001 and 2008. As for the artificial tire reef project we discussed in this video, it likely failed due to poor preliminary studies on the tire's impact on the marine environment and a lack of monitoring of the reef's development after its creation. Experts say the most important step when building any artificial coral reef is to ensure beforehand that the materials used are suitable and safe, and that the environment where the reef will be submerged is capable of receiving it without being harmed. Thus, we have learned about the most prominent, successful, and failed experiments in this field, and what makes artificial reefs beneficial or harmful. Do you think dumping tires into the sea is a clever solution to save marine life, or is it an environmental catastrophe in disguise? Share your opinion in the comments. That's all for this video. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.